Hi everyone, welcome to another vlog here. I'm sitting right next to Mark Levy, the former global head of employee experience at Airbnb. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do so and uh, don't forget to watch the rest of the episodes. Hi Mark. How are you doing? I'm doing good, how are you? Excellent. Okay, so tell me, uh, to you, what employee experience, what does that mean? Uh, well, the way I've learned to define it after being in it for four and a half years is kind of three things. One is that um, it's about a shift in the mindset of the leaders of a company um, to thinking about doing things with and for your employees, not to them. Um, it is a shift in the ways of working, um, which is really about treating your employees the same way you want uh, them to treat your customers. So it's really starting with your customer and working backwards. Um, and it's uh, thirdly about organization. So um, what is included within what was typically HR, it's now a broader function, and also how you work with other parts of the organization that um, have an influence over the employee journey, functions like marketing, finance, IT. Um, so those are kind of the three components, I would say, of what is this shift from HR to employee experience. And how did you guys uh, apply this principle at Airbnb? Well, so it, it really started in when I joined that the three founders of Airbnb had uh, really clearly articulated what kind of company they wanted to build and they were very focused on the culture and they weren't all that knowledgeable about what HR was because uh, none of them had really worked anywhere before and everything they'd heard about HR they didn't really like. Uh, so the task was how do I take these disparate groups of people or organizations that were focused on different parts of, of the employee journey, bring them together, and then figure out what we called it and how we kind of created the operating model. And so that's what inspired me to say to Brian Chesky, the CEO of Airbnb, well, you have a customer experience team, so why don't we think about creating an employee experience team that is focused on the end-to-end -end employee journey that sets them up to feel engaged and committed and and then helps them to figure out how they deliver on our promise to our customer. For us, it was our hosts and our guests. But how do you set up an, an employee experience team? And do you believe that all companies should do that? Okay, let's see, those are two questions. The first <laughs> one is, um, uh, how do you do it? Well, uh, you start with a traditional HR function and then you do two things. One is you shift the way you work so you start with problems rather than solutions and you co-create um, with your employees to get to the best outcomes rather than starting with the outcome or some perception that you know what they need and then taking a year and delivering this perfect solution that isn't ever perfect and doesn't address most of the needs of, of the employees. Um, and then you also thoughtfully consider um, what other parts of the organization either could sit with an employee experience. So for example, we included an employee experience, um, facilities, safety and security, uh, work environments, and the food team. Um, and we also then took a lot of the operational roles like office managers and EAs and PAs. And they were already kind of a self-organized team called ground control that was created to help bring the culture to life through what were otherwise operational roles. And so it was really a shift in how they thought about what they did and how they did it. Um, and, and so that was one piece of it, that org structure of bringing things in. There was um, some additional things that we introduced, like for example, volunteerism was really important. So we started social impact within employee experience and we introduced four hours of volunteer time a month paid. And then that really ballooned into volunteerism being part of our onboarding process and volunteering with our hosts. And we ended up giving employees 
uh, money to contribute to nonprofits rather than watches or champagne at their anniversaries. We stopped doing um, holiday parties and started volunteering during the holidays, which tends to be the saddest and hardest time for those that are less fortunate. And, and then social impact blossomed beyond employee volunteerism and moved into a lot of work that the company did um, with nonprofits and in a much more charitable way. So it actually moved out. But yeah. long story short, I think you be thoughtful around what it is that is going to be most impactful within the function, make those part of the function, and then partner with or create a virtual team across the organization with other parts of the organization that are part of that employee journey. IT is a perfect example. Okay. Um, you mentioned earlier, you mentioned the Airbnb culture, and I know one of your uh, main values is hospitality. Mm -hmm. How do you put that value into practice when it comes to employee experience? Okay. Yeah, so the, uh, the value you're talking about, we articulated as be a host, um, which came from hospitality. And by that, you know, we meant, first of all, to be a host in your home, since that's what the company does is yeah. um, host people in their homes. And then we also tried to figure out when that wasn't possible, how do you give employees the opportunity to host? So, for example, um, we had our, all of our employees have the opportunity to spend time at the front desk to be a host to those that were coming to visit and to host um, and work with their colleagues when people were, were um, coming into the office. Um, we actually um, put a station at the, at the office that allowed employees who were hosting to exchange their linens if they didn't have time to do that themselves. Interesting. Uh, we gave our employees $500 a quarter to travel on Airbnb so that they could experience the business, but also we sent them off with thank you gifts and ask them to sit down in the living rooms of our hosts and ask them what it was like to be a host and what we could do better. So a lot of it was around creating um, or breaking down the walls and the barriers between employees, hosts, and guests, and, and then giving our employees the opportunity to get closer to hosts and guests so that they could, I mean, basically what we said was, if we're gonna create a world where anyone can belong anywhere, then we need to create a company where people feel they belong here. Okay. And so our role was to create belonging and also to help our employees become empathetic and understanding of the hosts that we're delivering belonging um, through our values and through our behaviors. You know, talking about you know, employees, when it came to attracting the right talent with many people applying for a job at Airbnb, I can imagine, how did you manage to find the right yeah, fit? Yeah, that's a great question. Yeah, one, in 2016, we had uh, 260,000 applicants for less than 900 wow. positions. Um, so we were lucky, but it also meant there was a bullshit factor we had to deal <laughs> with. Um, and so we were looking for missionaries, not mercenaries, because a lot of people want to come to work either because it was a cool place to work, it was going to be good on their resume, or they thought they could make a lot of money because eventually the, co the company will probably go public. And so we took the opportunity to figure out how do we focus on missionaries. So before I even got there, um, there was put in place uh, a basically a, a two-pronged approach to recruiting. One was around technical functional skills where the hiring manager was uh, responsible. And then once they got to a final candidate, it went to core values interviewing. And there were two core values interviewers, and they were initially Brian and Joe and Nate, the founders, and then eventually they handpicked people who were doing core values interviews. And then now there's probably over 200 people who were selected through a nomination process. But those core value interviewers, they don't have the CV in front of them. A lot of times they don't even know what job the person's interviewing for. And all they're looking at or listening for is, are they joining for the right reason? So do they believe in a world where anyone can belong anywhere? Do they believe in powering our hosts to be micro-entrepreneurs? Do they believe in creating a local and authentic travel experience? 
and will they further our values? And so we created behavioral-based interviewing questions that identified whether or not um, that candidate was going to deliver on be a host and the other three values. And if there were signals for each of those, then the person passed. If there weren't, then the person didn't pass. If both uh, interviewers, core value interviews, said yes, not a problem. If both said no, the person didn't get hired. No questions asked, even though they were the most qualified individual based on the hiring manager. Wow. So it was pretty rigorous. And that, I believe, was one of the reasons why we could grow from, say, 600 to 1,200 in one year and still have very low turnover and very high engagement. Yeah, okay. Um, so a typical, typically an employee at Airbnb, how, um, what trades do they have? What soft skills or hard skills uh, do they need to have? Yeah, I mean, so a lot of that came out of the behaviors from the values. Um, and so the you touched on the first value, which was be a host. So we were looking for people who were empathetic and knew how to host other people and how to look at individual needs and how to, how to um, create that type of connection. Um, one of them was champion the mission, so I just described how we looked for that relative to um, belonging and empowering and, and um, local and authentic. The other two were much more, one was embrace the adventure, the other was um, uh, serial entrepreneur. And those were a lot of identifying to what extent they were a lifelong learner, they had a global mindset, uh, they took risks, they learned from their mistakes, um, those kind of things. And so those were the attributes we were looking for, flexible, um, fluid, collaborative, okay. yeah. Um, my final question, when it, comes to when it came to employer branding, how did you guys try to make a difference um, compared to other tech companies trying to attract the right talent? Um, so I worked really closely with our CMO, Jonathan Mildenhall, and I, a lot of the Silicon Valley companies talked about changing the world, and while they may have, I think for us, it was, we were at the intersection of technology and humanity. And so for us, particularly with what was going on, continues to go on in, in the United States relative to, at the time it was around uh, the elections and now it's the Trump era, but um, everything that was going on was around um, pitting people against each other and, and a lack of trust. And Airbnb was about trust and it was around creating belonging and embracing diversity. And so it was pretty easy, to be honest, with creating an employment brand because we were very consistent between our internal and our external brand. And we were a place that everyone should feel like they belong. And so um, it was a place where people were really excited to come to work and they loved the mission and they loved each other and it was a place, it was, it was almost like a family. Okay, that's beautiful. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much. Yeah, pleasure. If, yeah. if you want to see more of this type of interviews, don't forget to subscribe. Thank you, see you next time.